So, I've dealt with a lot of copyright claims in my time. A lot of whiny ass copyright complaints. But this one just takes the biscuit, right? So this here is what one of my videos looks like. As you can see, there's, there's quite a lot of clips in there, quite a lot of editing involved. And this was the super battery busted video. So you'll in tank and for the oxygen tank and give or take it's about two parts of right? oxygen. That, that, that's the video, right? Now, which part of all of this video here do you think is the one that someone wants to be credited for? Otherwise, they'll file a copyright complaint against me. No, they're not that one that one. It was in the late 1970s when John Goodenough developed the first lithium ion batteries right here at the University of Oxford. And if I don't acknowledge her for this great intellectual contribution, she's going to have to resolve this through the YouTube copyright system. Dear Thunderfoot, I was notified that you used some of my segments on my glass battery video, which is crap by the way, that's why I actually put it in there. Because it's one of these things, I watch these videos and none of them raise the pertinent question, which is, isn't packing that much energy into a battery just really stupid? And there's a gazillion other problems with it as well. Like, you know, how does it actually work if it's the same metal on both the anode and the cathode? Because yeah, I can't generate a chemical potential that way, but whatever. There's a gazillion other problems like this. And in her video, she tackles none of them. I mean, it's the exact sort of video you would expect from someone who doesn't actually have a real understanding of the subject that she's covering. But we'll come back to that shortly. Anyway. Uh, in your recent video, starting at 9.54 to 106, that's the one I've just shown you, and 10.55 to 104, which I'll show you in a second. Just a note, in these specific instances, your footage of my footage does not fall under fair use or fair dealings here in the UK. I won't make a fuss about something so short, but in future presentations, please don't use my videos without permission, and please give credit to my animations you've used this time. Please link yada yada yada, right? And that's from Inez Laura Dawson D. Phil of Interdisciplinary Bioscience at University of Oxford. So she must be really, really a high flower. We'll come back to that as well shortly. So, and that's followed up merely hours later, right? So when was this one sent? This was yesterday at four o'clock. And then yesterday at 11 o'clock, However, if the credits aren't updated by six o'clock, I will be obliged to uh, tomorrow, six o'clock, right? So that's less than 24 hours. I will be obliged to go through the YouTube copyright system to settle the dispute. Kind regards, Inyas. Well, firstly, bullshit. But secondly, damn is that taking super entitled princess mode to the next level. You know, respond to me within 24 hours or I'll sue you over that 10 seconds of video. I mean, let me just tell you something about the YouTube copyright system and copyright in general. There was this case where uh, Prince or the music company Universal, Lens versus Universal, there we go. They wanted to sue some woman because their baby was dancing and in the background, you were just about here 30 seconds of music playing on the radio. And they said that was copyright infringement. This, and they lost that case. And there's another one recently with H3H3 and some guy doing absurd parkour videos, but whatever. So that's, to claim that that's not transformative work uh, would be a real stretch. And her other clip, which is actually an animation, right? Which is there. Uh, so let's let, let's play this bit. That 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 little bit there is her animation. I think. Energy. You can't do that with a battery because you need at least one atom to hold the charge, one atom to take the charge when it discharges, and you need to separate the two by something. By <laughs> you know, to stop it discharging immediately. Then, of course, you don't just want to get energy out of the system. You want to get electrical energy out of the system, which carries penalties of its own. Right. So, I mean, first of all, it's a remarkable 10 seconds of video. And then you actually see these little stretch marks on it, which means it's been stretched. I'm not entirely sure why I did that, but whatever. Um, so... 
10 seconds of video and she thinks that that doesn't fall under fair use. I've seen some entitled princesses in my time, but I mean, this just takes the biscuit in terms of, uh, seriously, you you want uh, credit for 10 seconds of video, otherwise you'll file copyright complaints? Firstly, I'm gonna tell you exactly how that's gonna go. I'm gonna file a counter notice, at which point you will have the option to sue me for the massive financial damages that you've suffered for this. And if you don't, then after that, I have the right to counter sue you. In other words, the second you actually file the DMCA, if you don't follow through on it, I have the right to counter sue you. So because I actually really care about this sort of thing, because it if you get this litigious about copyright, it just completely stymies the whole of YouTube. But yeah, I can, I can tell you that the reason I use such short clips, which people have accused me of quote mining before, is because I keep the clips always below 15 seconds, unless they're mine, right? And the reason I always keep the clips below 15 seconds is twofold. First of all, that's a cutoff in the YouTube algorithm that, uh, if you're doing copyright detection, if you want to detect um, a long clip, it's actually comparatively easy. It takes progressively more CPU power to detect the small ones. So that's one reason they don't do it. The second is there is nothing on earth below 15 seconds that anyone could sensibly file a copyright claim on. Right, so that's the second reason why they don't have a cutoff below 15 seconds. So yeah, you can make a um, you know, 15 second mashup of anything you want and it will be within fair use. So, where do we get to? Oh yes, the precious princess. Uh, this is her. Um, interdisciplinary DPhil student at University of Oxford Science Communicator. Yeah, I, for me, I've often felt that science communicators should at least understand the science, but whatever. Um, you know, in other words, having someone who is incredibly junior um, and did her work in bioscience probably doesn't understand much about batteries, right, for instance. Anyway, uh, so what was she? Uh, University of Oxford, ranked third out of 109. That's not too bad. Um, then we then we get on to the princess stuff, right? Featured skills. She has the featured skills of being able to use Microsoft Office. <laughs> okay, that's good. She's she's got customer service and online camera talent and public speaking. Um, uh, Oxford Doctoral Training Center Impact Award. Uh, honestly, it would have been. Yeah, I mean, I, I watched her battery video and was extremely underwhelmed by the level of insight that she had into the subject she was covering, but whatever. Um, which is why I actually made it made it onto the cutting board in the first place. YouTube Next Up winner, Code First Girls Double Project Award. And if you look at Code First Girls, it's basically... Uh, yeah, it, it, most, most people who learn to code, they don't get any special award for it. But this is coding for girls where they actually need awards to actually code. So yeah, good for you. Um, a FameLab regional finalist, got no idea what the hell that is. Then of course you come to her Twitter feed where she says, yada yada yada, that she is a BBC expert woman. Most people would just be happy to be described as experts, but no, she's an expert woman. Wonderful. Yeah, I mean, that, that that's just, just what we need is... I mean, the thing is, if I describe myself as an expert man, you know deep down that these people would all lose their shit over it, but her describing herself as an expert woman and a BBC expert woman, ah, no, nah, that, that's fine. Anyway, right, so, yeah, let me tell you how this is going to go in it. You can file your copyright complaint if you want, and I'll just file a counter notice. My video goes down for two weeks. After I win, I then have the option to sue you. And what the hell does that achieve? Right, and, and, and let me just say, what, why people will ask, 
Why don't I just acknowledge this sort of thing? I'm a kind of busy guy, right? I've got to choose how I spend my time. I've got to prioritize my targets. And honestly, bookkeeping videos like this, where I document every clip that I put in there, would just be kind of a dumb way of spending my time. Because let's be real, almost no one reads the description. I know this because I've said in some videos, go look at the video in the description, and I've watched the view counter afterwards. And if 1% actually go and watch that video, it's stunning. But why not do it for her? Well, honestly, if someone is being this entitled, first of all, to the point where if they if they got their way, they would set the precedent that would basically be a chilling force on YouTube, that anyone who uses more than 10 seconds of clips must go through and acknowledge me. And it's like, no, no, they don't. I mean, look, every now and again, I get messages saying, can I use your video, yada, yada, yada. If I have time to give a response at all, it's always the same, which is use whatever the hell you want. I don't care whether you credit me or not. And uh, secondly, if it's for fair use, you don't need my permission anyway. And that's the way it should be on YouTube. There shouldn't be this entitled princess attitude to copyright.